Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. My dear respected brothers, sisters, fellow youngsters, is there anyone here that's listening, that's live, watching this, ever forsaken or given up something just for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? And a lot of times we feel like giving up something means giving up something big. I have to migrate or I have to you know, stop something that I'm doing haram. Al-muhajiru man hajara man hallahu an. A true immigrant. You know when they say a true soldier. A true migrant. Immigrant is a person who leaves something that Allah has said it, it is impermissible. The Prophet ﷺ has given us basic things. The Prophet ﷺ said, Man taraka al-mira'ata. Anyone that leaves argument, a discussion that is heating up, and he's right on their principles, or she's right. What I'm saying is the truth. But the argument is inflaming. And the discussion is getting heated. And a person realizes this is not the right option and leaves an argument. The Prophet ﷺ said, أَنَا زَعِيمٌ لَهُ بَيْتًا فِي الْجَنَّةِ فِي رَبَطِ الْجَنَّةِ I, I promise this person a palace in Jannah. Just for leaving a discussion, which was true. You could be defending Islam, you could be defending the Prophet's rights, you could be defending what is against injustice. But at the same time, you are fighting and you're arguing. The Prophet says, I promised that person a palace in Jannah. Nobody thinks about that. Brothers and sisters, the act of leaving something that is dear to us or that we're passionate about or we may feel correct about, for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the biggest good deed that person can, can involve in. And we compare these acts to Sahaba in the earlier generation, they left greater options. And today Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is asking us to overwhelm, overcome such challenges. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran, وَأَمَّا مَنْ خَافَ مَقَامَ رَبِّهِ وَنَهَا النَّفْسَ عَنِ الْهَوَى فَإِنَّ الْجَنَّةَ هِيَ الْمَأْوَى Those who can suppress their desires and all the time, desires are translated, many of the times, desires are translated into nafs, shahwa, lust, you know. But brothers and sisters, there may be a person who doesn't have the desire for the same thing you have, but they still have an ego. They still have an ego. The devil is still able to in, in, you know, influence that person, infiltrate into that person. So brothers and sisters, we go back into the lives of the righteous and we ask ourselves, when is the last time I left something for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Not because I wanted to do it, not because I was losing the argument, not because I didn't want to lose my job, left it for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And that, is, that comes with children, that comes with your spouse, that comes with your family, just left it. We do things for the sake of Allah. Did we leave anything for the sake of Allah? We do a lot of things. Prophet sallallahu says, مَنَ أَحَبَّ لِلَّهِ وَأَبْغَضَ لِلَّهِ وَأَعْطَى لِلَّهِ just stop something for the sake of Allah. I, you know what? I'm supposed to be going to a place that is forbidden. I'm supposed to be flipping the channels and watching something that's in, impermissible. I'm supposed to be surfing something online. This is supposed to happen. I just want to enjoy just past time. Man, just, just talk. Man taraka shay'an lillah. Leave something for... Just leave, leave some of your temptations for the next world. Leave some of the enjoyment for the next world. Leave some of your desires for the next life. But تُؤْثِرُونَ الْحَيَاةِ الدُّنْيَا الْآخِرَةِ This is not the world to enjoy everything. So brothers and sisters, when we go back and we analyze people who did not just leave for one day. You know, someone has to leave their family at Isha Salah. The children are crying. Baba, don't leave. But I have to go for Isha. Go for Maghrib. Someone has to go volunteer for some refugee camp in some part of the world or some human da'wah services and leave their family for a few days or a few weeks. Wife, children, leave them for the sake of Allah. We've left them for the sake of, sake of work. We've left our families for conferences. We've left our loved ones for seminars. Leave something on the table for the sake of Allah. Do that. And we will see results in our lives. We want money, but we leave it. We put it on the table for the needy. And we see what happens. We know that charity does not decrease wealth. Does not decrease wealth. 
Brothers and sisters, leave something out there for the sake of Allah. When we look back at the Sahaba and the companions, they did not leave their families for one day. Or they did not leave a community that was just, you know, in the, in the brink of collapse. This was Makkah al Mukarramah. And they left their families. They left their families and it wasn't easy. For the closest companions to the Prophet ﷺ, doing that wasn't easy. Abu Bakr and Bilal, these are the closest people, they would do anything the Prophet ﷺ did. It wasn't easy for them. A lot of times people think that doing righteous acts because you're close to the Prophet ﷺ is easy. No, it's not. It's still difficult. When Abu Bakr and Bilal arrived in Medina, Medina was very toxic in climate. Everyone would get sick. The waba, the, the, the hardship of Medina and the sickness of Medina was very apparent. And Aisha radiallahu in the hadith al-Bukhari and Mutta Imam Malik, Aisha radiallahu anh is dakhaltu ala Abu Bakr Umar and I said to them, Kayfa tajid? How are you feeling? And Abu Bakr radiallahu anh says, you know, I'm, wa'ika, I'm, I'm sick, I just don't feel good, I can't get up, I can't do anything. Then she points at Bilal, Kayf? And he says the same things, I'm not feeling well, it's been like this for days. And Abu Bakr radiallahu anh, when he would get sick, he would say a couplet. He would say, Kullum musabbihin fi ahli. He says, you know, he's thinking about the next world, so this hardship can end. And Bilal, when he would get sick or he would, he would in Medina, he would say, Ala layta sha'ri hal layla. Tell me one day I can spend, well, just give me, a, give me an option of spending one more night in Makkah. Bi layla. Bi wadin in the valley, hawlun wa idkhurun wa jalilu. Wa hal yabdu an li shamatun, wa hal yabdu li shamatun wa tafilu. Tell me that I can see the mountains or the, or the gardens of Makkah. I just want to go back, spend one night in Makkah. That's all I want to do. One night back in Makkah. So Aisha radiallahu anha heard this. She goes back to the Prophet and says, Ya Rasulullah, Abu Bakr and Bilal are complaining. They can't enjoy, they're just suffering here. They had suffered when they left Makkah. The Prophet وسلم, he suffered when he left Makkah. He looks back at the Kaaba. He says, He looks back at the Kaaba. He says, If it wasn't for your own people, O Kaaba, meaning the neighbors of the Kaaba, the Quraysh, I would never leave your neighborhood. I would never leave your shade. I would never leave this place. I want to stay here. But brothers and sisters, they had a position in life. They left their communities not once, multiple times. They could not settle in this world. You know we settle? Buy a house, get furniture, you know, landscape our front and our back. They couldn't settle. I don't know any Sahabi who was a settler. Always on the move. From Mecca, Medina to Mecca, Habasha to Sham to Palestine, you find their graves everywhere. <laughs> Never, you know, they were on the move. مَا فِي الْمَقَامِ لِذِي عَقْلٍ وَذِي أَدَبِ مِنْ رَاحَةِ فَدِعِ الْأَوْطَانِ وَاغْتَرِبِ سَافِرْ تَجَدْ عِوَضًا عَمَّنْ تُفَارِقُ وَانْصَرْ فَإِنَّ لَذِيذَ الْعَيْشِ فِي النَّصَبِ well, You know, إِنِّي رَأَيْتُ وَقُوفَ الْمَاءَ يُفْسِدُ إِنْ سَاحَ طَابَ وَإِنْ لَمْ يَجْرِي لَمْ يَطِبِ وَالْأُسْدُ لَوْلَا فِرَاقُ الْأَرْضِ مَفْتَرَسَتْ وَالسَّهْمُ لَوْلَا فِرَاقُ الْقَوْسِ لَمْ يُصِبِ وَالشَّمْسُ لَوْ وَقَفَتْ فِي الْفُلْكِ دَائِمَةً لَمَلَّهَا النَّاسُ مِنْ عُجُمٍ وَمِنْ عَرَبِي وَالتِّبْرُ كَالتُّرْبِ مُلْقًا فِي أَمَاكِنِهِ وَالْعُودُ فِي أَرْضِهِ نَوْعٌ مِنَ الْحَطَبِ وَإِن وإن تَغَرَّبَ هَذَا عَزَّ مَطْلُبُ وَإِن تَغَرَّبَ ذَاكَ عَزَّكَ الذَّهَبِ They had a purpose. They wanted to be with someone. They wanted to move with a mission and a vision. And their plots were against these people. Allah speaks about these people. وَإِذْ يَمْكُرُوا بِكَ الَّذِينَ كَفَرُوا لِيُثْبِتُوكَ وَيَقْتُلُوكَ وَيُخْرِجُوكَ وَيَمْكُرُونَ وَيَمْكُرُ اللَّهُ وَاللَّهُ خَيْرُ الْمَاكِرِينَ They were on the edge. But the movement continued. The mission and the purpose of life continued. They never settled. They were on a purpose of life. They left. We, we talk about the men, you know, it, was a, it, was, it became a discussion in Medina. كَانُوا فُضِّلُوا عُمَرْ عَلَى بِبَكَرْ It was a, became a discussion in Medina that everyone started saying, Umar is better than Abu Bakr. <laughs> right? Everyone, it just became like the afwa, the rumor around the discussion of, of people's dinner tables, in the streets, in the markets of Medina. Umar is way better than Abu Bakr. So one day, Umar radiallahu anhu wanted to set the record straight. And he says, Wallahi, yawm 
يوم من أبي بكر وليل خير من آل من خير من عمر وآل عمر. Make the record straight. One day of Abu Bakr's life and one night or evening of Abu Bakr's life is better than mine. In the night he was referring to brothers and sisters. Umar radiallahu anhu speaks about in the same discussion. He says, "Kharaja Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam." The Prophet sallam left Medina, Mecca, with Abu Bakr as-Siddiq radiallahu anhu. And Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu was seeing. He was walking. فَجَعَلَ يَمْشِي خَلْفَهُ وَجَعَلَ يَمْشِي بَيْنَ يَدَيْهِ. He started in the desert walking. Abu Bakr would walk in front of him. Then all of a sudden, would walk behind him. The Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam noticed these movements, strange movements, in front and behind, in front and then behind. If we can please keep our masks above our nose, Jazakumullah khair. Started to walk back and front, back and forth on the Prophet Sallallahu The Prophet Sallallahu says to Abu Bakr, "Ma laka tamshi? You know, amami, wa laka tamshi khalf. Why are you walking in front of me or bayna yidi? Why are you walking in front of me and then you walk behind me all of a sudden?" Abu Bakr radiAllahu anhu says, "Ya Rasulullah, azkuru talab fa amshi bayn, amshi amshi warak." O Prophet of Allah, when I want to find some help. Look for some assistance. I walk behind you. ثم أذكر الرسل فأمشي بين يديك. Then I, I, I remember that there are people who are going to ambush you, attack you. So I walk in front of you to protect you. Then the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم says to Abu Bakr, يا أبا بكر لو كان شيء لا أحببت لا أحببت أن أن تكون بك من دوني. Oh Abu Bakr, if something was going to happen, would you want that to happen to you? And you would defend me by giving your life? Is that true? And Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu says, Ya Rasulullah, walladhi ba'thaka bil haq. Naam. I swear to God, I would take an arrow on my neck, I would take a sword on my chest, I would give my life to defend you. And it doesn't end over there. Hatta idha wasal al-ghar, they get to the, the cave, Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu says, makanaka ya Rasul, makanaka. Stay in your location, stand there ya Rasulullah. Hatta astabr ulak. Let me clean this cave out. Fastabra. He cleans the entire cave, all the holes, everything. He patches it, and he says, "Anzil ya Rasulullah." He says, "Come into the cave." And Abu Bakr radiAllahu anhu welcomes the Prophet Sallam. He cleans this place out, and then says, "Umar says, 'Thumma qala Umar, walladi nafsi biyadi la tilka al-layla, la tilka al-layla khairun min ali Umar." Just that one night, there were people giving up everything for the Prophet Sallam for Islam. And when we talk about Suhib al-Rumi, a, a foreigner in, and you could say. In Makkah and Mukarramah, accepted Islam, and now he's migrating, and Makkah is at his front. And they say to him, "You cannot leave Makkah. You have you bought properties here. We helped you invest in this part of the world. You can't leave. We're going to kill you. You stay here. You can't leave for Islam." And the Sufi Rumi says, "Listen, I'll make a deal with you because at the end of the day, it's all about the peso. It's all about the dollar. It's all about the oil. It's all about the gas." Nobody really cares about Palestine and Israel conflict. Nobody really cares about what's happening in Syria. It's all about the mines, the resources. No, it's all about the money. Human lives are killed just for money, and that's a concept of a person that lives through this world. So Suhaib al-Rumi already knew. He diagnosed the, the issue with these guys, and he said, "Listen, I'll give you all my money. Take it. Let me leave." They're like, "What? Really?" These people fight for inches, and this man is ready to give all his wealth so he can go join the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. He said, "Take all my money, take everything." And he says, "I have investments here, I have treasures here, I have wealth here. Take it all." And he gets to Medina, and the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam sees him from a distance, and he says, "Rabbi al Bayu ya Aba Yahya, you made the best deal of your life. You made the best deal of your life." He says, "Ma sabqani ilayka ahad ya Rasulullah." He says, nobody here came. Nobody here knew that I did all of this. I'm the first one to join you from this whole episode. How do you know about it? Ma sabqani ilayka ahad. There's no one can tell you about what I just did. Illa akhbaraka biha Jibreel. The only way you know that Jibreel is Salam has informed you. Wa min al nasi man yashri nafsahu btiqa amar dhat Allah. Wallahu raufun bil ibad. They sold their their wealth of this. Dunya. They gave it away. They get, and then the opposite. أولئك الذين اشتروا الضلالة بالهدى فما ربحت تجارتهم وما كانوا مهتدين. There's the opposite of that too. So brothers and sisters, what have you given away? What have I given away? Whether it's our ego, arguments, our wealth, our time, for the sake of Allah Subhanahu wa Taala. It's a huge deal if we can give up five salah for the sake of Allah. 
It's a big deal nowadays. People are praying five times salah on time. Some people cannot even leave work for Jum'ah. It's a big deal. Leave work for Jum'ah. Oh my goodness. 30 minutes in the entire week. What are we asked from Allah? Allah is asking us so little. And Allah is giving us everything in Akhirah. وَمَنْ أَرَادَ الْآخِرَةَ وَسَعَى لَهَا سَعْيَهَا وَهُوَ مُؤْمِنْ فَأُولَٰئِكَ كَانَ سَعْيٌ مَشْكُورٌ Allah says, just make the little struggle. I will be there for you. And, that's, and, and then the struggle becomes easy when you fall in love with what you're doing. It's, ask those who work. Ask those who wake up early morning and sweat. The struggle becomes easy when you start to enjoy it. Like the poet says, أَمُوتُ بِدَائِي لَا أُصِيبُ دَوَائِيَّا وَلَا فَرَجًا مِمَّا أَرَى مِن بَلَائِيَّا إِذَا كَانَ دَاءُ الْعَبْدِ حُبَّ مَلِيكٍ فَمَنْ دُونَهُ يَرْجُوْ طَبِيبًا مُدَاوِيًا That's subhanAllah. It's like, I don't need your cures. The love that I have is for Allah. That's my cure. إِذَا كَانَ دَاءُ الْعَبْدِ حُبَّ مَلِيكٍ فَمَنْ دُونَهُ يَرْجُوْ طَبِيبًا مُدَاوِيًا Look back at these people. You know, Lama Iqbal says a poem that's been translated by Abu Hassan Nadwi in Arabic. He says, مَنْ ذَا الَّذِي رَفَعَ السُّيُوفَ لِيَ then the Sahaba, he bought the Sahaba, he says, Kunna jibalan fil jibali wa rubbama sirna ala al mawjil bihari bihara. If we had to go over mountains, nothing stopped us. And the opposite was, Law kana aradan qariban wa safaran qasidan la tabaruka wa lakin baudat alayhim wa shukka. Law say yahlifuna billahi la was tatana la harajana ma'akum. Yuhlikuna and fusahum. Wallahu yalamu innahum la kadim. With no excuse here. But the attitude was, you put mountains in front of these people. You put the ocean in front of us. And Nothing stopped these individuals. They were on a mission. They never settled. Never settled. They had wealth. They had families. They had children. This was the attitude to the Ansar. He said to the Ansar, Ya Ansar, Sabran. He said this to Ali Yasir, Sabran, Ya Ali Yasir, فَإِنَّ مَوْعِدَكُمُ الْجَنَّةِ Then he said the same thing a few years later to the Ansar, Isbiru hatta talqawni ala al I'll be there. I'll be at the pond to give you water from my pond. Brothers and sisters, what have we sacrificed? Just little arguments. Sometimes you go on social media, people are fighting, trolling each other. On, on these WhatsApp chat groups, لَا حَوْلَ وَلَا قُوَّةَ إِلَّا بِاللَّهِ and they're fighting over Islam, but they're not following any principles of Islam. I mean, for example, of Eid discussion. We'll argue, argue, should we have it, should we not have it? But Islam teaches us. Just forget it. Aggression is not the answer for justice all the time. No way. I mean, there's good trouble people talk about, but again, Brothers and sisters, you cannot forsake the core principle of Islam in dealing with other people. Sometimes you just, the arguments going back and forth, just khalas. Hasbi Allah, that's good enough. Say your point, lead the discussion. And then people have tantrums, they leave the WhatsApp group, and the person who's an admin gets disappointed and he messages them like this is like a party. Who cares? Let up the WhatsApp group. Let them have a fun day. Let them enjoy their life. We take everything personal. Social media, anyone that disagrees with us. Man tarak al mira'ata. Anyone that leaves an argument, they're right about it. Allah's Prophet said, "Ana zain. I promised them a palace in Jannah." Where does that happen? Sahaba left so much more than that. They left their families. They left their communities. Ibn Umar, and I conclude with this. Now, once you leave something for the sake of Allah, there's no such thing as going back and say, "You know what? I left it a few years ago. Now I want it back." No, no, no. There's no such thing like that. Once you leave something for the sake of Allah, you leave an argument, don't bring it back. Don't come back to the argument 10 years later. See? He said, كان ابن عمر إذا مر بمربعه في مكة غمس عينيه. Subhanallah. He said, Ibn Umar radiallahu anhu, when he came back to Mecca, and he came back multiple times to Umrah and Hajj, whenever he would walk by the house that he left, to, when he migrated, he would lower his gaze. He would lower, he would not even look at the property that he gave away for the sake of Allah. He said, I left this for the sake of God. There's no point of even resting there. Forget looking at it. There were two things that people would talk about in Umar. One was this, and the second one was also very notable. 
ما ذكر النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم عند ابن عمر إلا بكى. Never was the Prophet mentioned in front of Ibn Umar except that he cried. He always cried. He said Muhammad Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa he wept. This was Ibn Umar. Brothers and sisters, we have to learn to give for the sake of Allah and we also have to learn to forsake the wrong for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Arguments, parts of our life. You know what, today I'll give away my part of my sleep for tahajjud. Good. What have we given away for the sake of Allah? Imagine we have nations of companions who give away nights. Allah is speaking about those people who sleep very little, but they would cry at night. So you gave away your sleep. You gave away your temptations, your desires. And inshallah, in the return for this is a reward of Jannah. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make us people who learn to give away what's in favor of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for our, for our akhirah. Give away our, our desires, our egos, our haram relationships, our haram or bad habits for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And know this for a fact. Anytime you give away something for Allah, Allah gives you better. That's a fact. Even your ego. Allah says in the Quran, and the Prophet says in the Hadith, Man tawadaa lillah rafa'ahullah. It's anyone that humbles himself, Allah elevates them. Amazing. Whoever forgives someone, Allah forgives them. Illa azza. Allah gives them honor. This is the rule of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You give your money, I make you rich. You become humble, I make you respected. You forgive, I'll honor you and forgive you. Do this for the sake of Allah, not for the sake of people. And you will see the return of this. And it's true, this is not a hadith, it's always attributed to a hadith. Man taraka shay'an lillah, Allah Not a narration, but this is a fact. True. It lines up with the idea of narrations. You leave something for the sake of Allah. You will see what happens. Give it a chance. I swear to God, adults who are here, they have tried this and know the result of it. Let the youth pick up this habit. Today, I will not do this. And tomorrow, I will leave this for the sake of Allah. And don't wait one day, two days. Sometimes it takes years, but something good is coming in the pipeline. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to give us that ability just to live for His sake and give away the wrong for His sake.